three, two, one. Bye, Yari. Oh, that's not what we're doing? Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Bye. Okay, so this week, all right, I'm actually going to start over now. <laughs> <laughs> I actually, we, we almost never start, like, hard rest reset when we start the podcast we're ever. Really we just kind of roll yeah, right into it. So, yeah. so I'm pretty much okay with fumbling my way through the intro. But uh, we wanted to start today with a little bit of a narrative from Kayla's morning. Oh. Yeah, let's start with that. <laughs> so did you get run out of the gym today or what? No, it was a good <laughs> morning. I was feeling really positive about it. And then when I got home, Julian's like, you're in a great mood. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I am. I'd yes. But you were being totally. really sarcastic. <laughs> yeah, so I woke up feeling like... I'm never sarcastic. Like it was deadlift day. So Kay. I went over and the guys are using the bars that I want to use. So I have to use this like old, slippery, super thick bar. Yeah. I did my stuff. And uh, so what do you do? Yeah, okay, but they're all using their bars to do a 60 kilo deadlift while you're doing a 140. Yeah. So yeah, I'm sure they're like, oh, I wish yeah. we would have <laughs> filmed that. Yeah. yeah. The so men are insecure in global gyms here, I've noticed. So I'm sure they were like, what is she doing? You can't put three plates on the bar. Not an option. You're not, you're not supposed to. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I don't know what's worse when I go into deadlift or when I go into squat because I think that's like yeah, it really is bad for them. <laughs> yeah. But oh, so you went into squat, right? So you did wide. I did. So I did deadlifts and then I did wide stance back squats, mm -hmm. which totally blew up my back. Right. So you felt your lumbar rectus a lot. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because yeah. I wanted to go into emotional mapping, and you know, um, lumbar rectus is where you store anger. You know, like so. When you don't express anger, you blow up your back. But when you acti activate them correctly, especially with the glute mid, you get a very strong sympathetic reaction. I mean, like, yeah, almost like a release of uh, certain things inside. <laughs> and people feel very confident and happy and, uh, you know, confident. So that's great, right? Yeah. Yeah. I was uh, quite peeved by all of the traffic of <laughs> bicycles on the way here. <laughs> So yeah, or everything else. Pretty much everything. You know, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I'd be like, "Hi, honey, how are you?" <laughs> like, "I'm good." Oh, found your lumbar erector, didn't you? How did you know? Just, like, just a guess. It's a good day. Was was when you, when you say found them? Do you mean like 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 blew yeah. them up, painful, yeah. almost no. in that way? No, no, no just I don't mean them painful, up. but like no, like uh, almost cramping. Like yeah. you, like the, when we say find your hammies and you, oh, oh what yeah. is that? That like that. Oh my god. Yeah. You know, like they almost contract by themselves. Yeah. Independently of every other muscle, like they go <coughs> like mm -hmm. this. And then when you get that, you get a release of anger. And then people are like, like yeah. a true sympathetic reaction, but a, but a good one. Not the stressed out one, I'm not happy. Yeah. That's when you can't do it correctly. If you truly find them, you're like, I'm going to kill this bitch. Like yeah. And everybody yeah. around. Like the butt pump where you're, it's like in your neck sort of thing. Yeah. But it was yeah. a good day. I've had those similarly, similarly only when like from like the glute mead. Yep. in general and then I'm like oh motherfucker like yeah. everything and to the point where I don't even know that I get I get mad but it's a real general anger you know what I'm saying yeah. it's like it's like a uh, I don't even know how to describe it I'm mad at everything I'm mad yep. at the reason I had to do that work to begin with it's usually yeah, you yeah. you get a super <laughs> sympathetic uh -huh. reaction when you get it true so it depends like if it's uh, true like when she found them found them mm -hmm. then you get a release out of it so you're like super happy just extremely aggressive if you don't get the if you just glute mid and you feel your lumbar rectus but they don't cramp then you'll get mostly just pissed or if it comes on you unexpectedly, you know what I mean? Like yeah. it's a, it's dictating to you how it's gonna yeah, go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then and, yeah, it's, and it's in the way. I That's the difference between the two. I think my most probably similar experience to that was even I think the first seminar I ever yeah. did. We had done I think I remember it was the second day. I think it was the second day, but we were doing some shit where it was a bunch of external torque work. We were doing some like heavy rows and shit like that. Mm -hmm. And already I'm like, yeah. woo, pretty blown up. And then Richard's like. I right, grab the sandbag and we're gonna go out for 400 meter walk with the bag and I'm like, okay. No, I'm not. And I made it. Yeah. I'm not joking. I made it literally yeah. like 20 meters out the door. Yeah, yeah. I remember. And they're both standing there like, and I had to drop the bag. Like, what are you doing? You're the biggest person here. What are you doing? And I'm like, yeah, because they all went. We went into that 400 meter track. Yeah, yeah the so track, was, you didn't this make was it some bullshit. Track. It was like 200 meters and then the track. <laughs> Just exaggerating. It was like 40 meters and then the track, but you didn't make it to the track. And I remember you're walking in this way like. Like couldn't even yeah. keep yeah. keep upright because yeah. of it. But my thing was I was like, I was mad at me, partially embarrassed. I was yeah. mad as fuck at them. Because yeah. they're like, I think Richard's response was like, what the 
the fuck is wrong with you? Just pick up the bag and go. I'm like, I can't. Yeah. Like, I literally cannot pick the thing. Yeah. But it wasn't, uh, poor, like, I was mad. Yeah. And I remember took the bag, I got almost to the track again, and I'm like, yeah. By the way, hundred pound bag. So no, yeah, no, hundred pound yeah. bag. Yeah, yeah. You just his bag blew up too. Yeah, but so you, so there's a deep relationship between the lumbar rectus and anger. I've seen a lot of people when they go to an anger, but they don't express it. Their back blows up mm -hmm. the next day, same day or next day. Interesting. And they wake up and they're like, "Oh my god, my back! What did I do?" I'm like, "You did not express it." But yeah, that's where the motion motion mapping is is great. But that reaction right there means she expressed it. Got you. Yeah. Usually I'm founded. really good at like stuffing it back in. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. She shuts down everything, not feeling What's it. What's the, the, like Bill, she was the like Bill Burr bit where he's like, just stuff it down, do some man shit, yeah, pretend exactly. like you know the answers. Because yeah. I could tell like she's not using her legs to it. She's just hinging over, so she's putting everything in the hammies and everything which she never does normally. And I was yeah. like, oh, something's <laughs> happening. And since then she's been at me like, yeah. A little bit, little bit full of piss and vinegar today. Yeah. Mm -hmm. let's say. yeah. So <laughs> welcome to emotional mapping. It works. <laughs> so what we want to get into today is it's almost a continuation of our conversation last week. Yeah. Um, and when we went, we went very much onto Kayla, your specific experience mm -hmm. in competition, what, the things we maybe exchange. Kayla. Damn it, Julian. <laughs> See, you're gonna put <laughs> me in this thing. <laughs> That's not money. <laughs> Don't put me in the spot here. <laughs> okay, she told me to call her that, so I have to stick with it. But I'm the one who makes people. Uh, anyway. <laughs> but but so we want to talk today a little bit about uh, kind of ev all of our experiences and some of the yep. things we've seen of how much is too much to exchange for progress or competition or anything like that, and how much is necessary. Yeah, exactly, because uh, we're not saying like, I think, First of all, we're going to introduce Kyla for a few episodes as a co-host. So if you like her, tell us, and then we'll keep you on board. And if you don't like me, don't tell me, because I yeah, don't yeah. care. Exactly, because <laughs> when I shall, she'll eat you alive anyway. <laughs> uh, but the key was that is like, what is necessary to sacrifice for performance? Because certain things are necessary to sacrifice. But are we? Do we need to sacrifice everything? Yeah. Right. What is necessary? What is just you hurting yourself? You know, what is not necessary for performance, because we have some very, very high level athletes, and no, you don't have to sacrifice everything in life. And yeah. should you? Like, can you sacrifice sleep, happiness, or stuff like that, and still perform anyway? Yeah. So that's, the, I want to talk about that. And yeah, and what you could, but what you actually need to sacrifice as well. I think people have those ones, and they misunderstand what needs to be, what yeah. needs to happen. And to I think make the it. time frames. Of, yeah. of the sacrifice is really important yes, too. Sure. Well, one, you rush your timeline, you have to sacrifice more, that's obvious. But what I mean by this is the things that I sacrifice on a day-to-day -day basis is mm -hmm. one thing. Yep. Uh, the things I sacrifice over the course of one to two years is, a, is another. Yep. That's a totally different set of things. Yep. And then the things that it costs me over the duration of my, life's, my yes. lifespan, yeah. which is another big one. Yep. Um, you know, for, for like the sport, I was strongman, uh, there's sacrifices made in the short term for sure, and in the middle term somewhat. But the real trade-off, especially when you get into the super heavyweight class, is like, that one. listen, inherently, none of us are going to live uh, maybe as long yeah. as the lightweight folks, if just statistically speaking. Uh, but then when you push and push and push and push to get as big and strong as you can, you know, that's a that, that's a pretty hefty long-term yeah. price to pay for something. But um, but that is also skewed very differently for things like CrossFit as well. Um, you know, you're, how much? How many hours a day were you training? Uh, like five. That's, yeah, that's why. Yeah, so we, we, we need to go at volume, but we need to go also at relationship, family, uh, yeah. sleep, happiness. What what is you know what do you have to sacrifice? And what if where are you mistaken? Yeah. What is going to actually hurt you, even in performance, if you just don't take care of it? Yeah. Like relationship and happiness, that idea that he has to go out the window, that it's you know, normal casualty to me is insane. Yeah. You can't make it at a high level without yeah. relationships. It's the one thing I'm thankful for about the changes with the CrossFit game season, is it took away that time frame of you have to be good by February. Yes. And like, <laughs> here's your chance to perform, and then the rest of the year, like either heal quickly or yeah. get stronger quickly or lose weight quickly. Mm -hmm. So now you've got opportunity to say all right in a year I want to qualify for this competition yeah and you have time and the way that they map that they can map their qualifiers now mm -hmm. you know pretty much still yeah. everyone's gonna do the open because 
Oh shit, you slide in, you slide in. It's five workouts. You're still going to do those workouts anyways. That's good. Um, but now the nice thing is, is people can schedule things in a sensible way. I think one of the most interesting things is those people that maybe were just hoping and hoping and hoping to qualify for regionals that were on the bubble and never quite, you know, you trade in an awful lot of yeah. pain and well, sleep December and work. December till and May, yeah. But, mm -hmm. but then at that, in that case, sometimes the worst thing you can do is now, hey, you made it to regionals now. Uh, yeah. So now the amount of tools you need to have at your disposal are, are times ten. Yeah. The amount of volume you need to but handle. But you're already is broken because 10. you had to do the open. Yeah, and you skidded to the yeah. finish because yeah. you only <laughs> prioritize one thing. Yeah. yeah. And so, uh, but that's common everywhere. That's exactly what I did with my last training season. Had a rough go, a couple injuries. So I was like, "Fuck it!" I got three months before did three want, competitions yeah. in five weeks. It's like time to go. So I need to get bigger to get stronger. Skid through, got through it, but felt like shit. Everything hurt. You know, it was like the total, you know, idea of someone doing yeah. what they, the opposite of what they are talking to other people about doing. Yeah, that too. And, and the idea that it works too, by the way. Yeah. Because that, that's what I want to go at today is the idea that it's actually, it's what makes you go to the next stage. Or actually, no, that's what, it's holding you back. Yeah. I mean, like just going through the that. Well, this year, if I just do this and this and this, and I do I add that one workout a day, and then I do. And no, man, that's yeah. not how this works. So let's start with yep. the physical side of things. All right, hours of the day is going to be taken away from other things for sure. Yeah. Right? Well, the stuff that you need to to sacrifice is is that is certain amount of hours during the week. So stuff where you would like to be doing to go outside to chill with your friends midday or stuff like that. You have some hours to do that, but there's going to be a minimum of work required. Yeah. And th the key for me is to tell people is like, whether you feel like it or not, there's some work to be done. It's not always like, you know, you don't have to PR today. You don't have to, um, you don't have, you can work on skill and everything. But the point is your training partner did not show up. Well, too bad. Too bad. Yeah. You're going to have to get your ass to the gym and it's beautiful outside. You should be at the beach. Probably, but you got to drag your ass to the gym and you got to do quality work. The key on this one is quality work. You don't get to go to the gym pouting about the fact that you're not outside, angry at your program, and not do quality work. That's a, my, the biggest thing that I see in that sense is that is people that show up to the gym angry because they would like to do something else. And uh, they, so they're just going to do the movement in a shitty way just to finish the program. <coughs> almost like, I'll show my coach. Yeah. And then they check the box, but at the end, the only person you're hunting is you. Because no one gives a shit that you want to be outside, that your training partner did not show up, you don't have your favorite shoes, you don't have your t your t-shirt, this is CrossFit. Uh, you don't have your t-shirt, <laughs> but um, you show up at the gym in that pissy mood and you you decide to go off, fuck it, and then either you do what you want and, and no. Yeah. That's the sacrifice, you're gonna have to put quality work even when you don't feel like it. And on the flip side of that too, like we saw it when we were dropping into different gyms, yeah. It, it's also not okay to spend three hours there doing 40 minutes of work. Yeah. Yes. Like there is integrity yeah. to setting yes. the clock, and doing going. your shit and getting out of there. Yeah. So actually that's a very good point is what you don't get to sacrifice is integrity. Yeah. That you don't get to I sacrifice. I think you have that. to lead with that. And if, yes. you're gonna, if you're going to, if you're going to get to, I mean, you may move up one level, two level, but you're not going to get very yeah. far if you compromise your integrity in your training. Yeah. And, well, and nutrition, sleep, all those yeah, things. No, so really, that's what really the integrity yeah. of the whole thing. Exactly. You, you, that has to be maintained throughout the whole thing. And, no and I what. think people... I think that's the given. That's that's the necessary. Sure. Yeah, because yeah. I, I think people sacrifice the wrong things because they sacrifice integrity first. Because they don't put the quality work on the shoot, because they're in the gym on their phone and everything, taking selfies mm -hmm. instead of putting the fucking quality work. And so then they look for other stuff to make themselves, I guess, pay for it in a weird way. And that's when the shit goes sour. You need to go to the gym and put the phone away. Yeah. Like there was a guy on Facebook. He was also. You're not telling He's me. You're just no. telling them, right? Yes. Okay. Thank yeah. you. Put the um, phone down. Put the <laughs> no, don't don't look at the phone. I'm not yeah. kidding. For an hour, 90 minutes, don't look at the phone. You're here to train. Yeah, it's a huge. You don't side. work for the FBI. You don't need to be. You're not on call unless you're an emergency doctor. You're not on call. Put the phone away. Leave it in your bag. Go fucking train for an hour and a half. That's it, you don't get to, there's a dude on Facebook who was saying the story of a girl who got the treadmill going and let it go for 15 minutes at a very high pace. And then by the end, got on it and took a selfie of herself 
with the miles accumulated nice. on the, I was like, I was fucking smart. That is nice. <laughs> How, and then all you that gotta, is my, I, I'll give you all that, and I did not think of it. All you got to do is show your metabolism that picture, exactly. and it knows how much work you did. Yes. Exactly. I think that's yeah. how it works. Because but if you didn't log the kilo <laughs> of cashews that you ate, you didn't need it. Exactly. Yeah. So if you didn't post it on Instagram, it you didn't I'm a little bit pissed that I never thought of it, by the way. But, um, <laughs> somebody, but somebody had posted a meme, too, the other day. It was like, they asked Arnold what the secret was to how he got so strong or got so yeah. big and all these things. And he said, well, my secret is texting. Uh, I make sure to grab my phone and sit down and, and, and text and check check Instagram between each set. And that's how I got stronger. <laughs> Obviously, it's a joke. but No, because he was in the 70s, <laughs> so he didn't have the text. So yeah, exactly. But so, you want to sacrifice? Start with that. Yeah. Right? I think people sacrifice. I, I see it a lot with relationships, stuff like that, and it's wrong. So, but let's start with that. That's I think it's the perfect one, is you won't get to sacrifice your integrity. So, integrity is what? Is quality of training, an hour. By the way, get a running clock. Yeah. If you're done in an hour, you're done in an hour. You don't get to do it an hour and 20 minutes. Get the shit done. You have two minutes rest in between, get two minutes rest in between. You don't get to take six. You don't get to, because you're on the phone, whoops, I forgot. Don't, just leave the phone in the bag. This takes you somewhere else where you shouldn't be anyway. You know what you should do in between sets? S think about your next set so you can do quality work. That's the biggest thing. Is that, don't get me wrong. This trap we're talking about, I live that for sure. But so like, did I. But 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 uh, yeah, it's it, it does like you said. It takes you completely out yeah. of the training, and that's the biggest thing. You can that come I back in every time. Yeah, you can work your way back in, but, but it's not. not always it's not easy. as good. It's not as good. Yeah. You're supposed to connect, not yeah. fucking connect. That yeah. is, you have the other 23 hours of the day to do that shit. So let it go. Yeah, and based on my screen time usage that Apple just forced onto my phone now. Which I did not want to know like about. Yeah, exactly. Fuck, fuck yeah. you. Yeah, I probably have some time that could be redistributed. <laughs> it sells to take over so much. It puts you in test negative, too. It, th th there's a price to pay for all that shit. Yeah. Well, the time that I noticed it the most was moving here, too. Like, 20 minutes on a bicycle here means there's no phone in my hand because I will die yeah. on the way here. But it helps me to get into a better mindset when for I'm training. training. Yeah. And now I'm uh, when I get here, I'll put <coughs> my stuff down and I'll start right away. Like my mindset is good. I'm focused. I know what I'm going to do when I get Warmed in here. Up. Yeah, I'm definitely <laughs> warm. No, but the active recovery you get out of 20 minutes on the bicycle, paying attention, but letting your mind flow. That's meditation. Mm -hmm. That's your 20 minutes a day of meditation is on the bicycle because you pay attention so that the rest of your brain can just go. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. It's, it's been extremely important. valuable yeah. when I'm here. Yeah. Yeah. And there's. Um, I think Arnold talks about it in the encyclopedia part, but there's quality too to being to being present in your rest periods because now instead of doing extra conditioning, like I've essentially turned my whole session of strength training into conditioning because yeah. mm -hmm. I'm you sweating and I'm dying yeah. and I've done so much volume in 90 minutes that I don't need to be here for two more hours. Yeah. And then there's remember what Abhijayev, Coach Abhijayev from the Bulgarian system said, the greater the stress, the greater the quality of the protein being produced. So in those two minutes of rest, you focus on your next set so you can hit it harder. There's a difference at the end. Different in the quality of muscle, the quality of work, the, you, that's how you get stronger. Is all those seconds where you're not fucking around on Instagram between your sets that accumulate. And there's an increase in just overall stress. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? If you do the yeah. same amount of work over two hours, instead of one, yeah. I mean, you're, you're really, yeah. It's not taking as much out of you. Now, granted, yeah. you may be able to put more into a few of the heavier things, but in general, Maybe. it's it's no. overall going to be less work. No, because over time you won't. Yeah. Because over time, that two hours will be two and a half. The intensity will go down. You won't survive. That's an interesting thing I see often amongst uh, CrossFit people, too, is that when you see people that start to take their time with things and they spend yeah. two, three hours in the gym, but very often, like you said, it's, it's 90 minutes of work. Yeah. Um, that it just becomes more and you try to stay yeah. more comfortable so it becomes three but hours the, the hours. problem is remember like the phone that has been proven time and time again you get addicted of that feeling of being busy mm -hmm. right and so you spend more and more time so at some point those three hours in the gym is just to say you were in the gym three hours oh i'm busy look at my day i don't do shit, but i was three hours in the gym mm -hmm. yeah but you didn't do shit in the gym either and yeah. who has an hour and a half to waste like most yeah. human beings work an eight hour a day they take go home and take care of their yeah. kids and they have to commute which is an hour like i'm sorry i don't have an extra 90 yeah. minutes to sit around on a barbell and look at people lift weights yeah. uh, which is good but again this is good even if you have an hour extra 
Go outside. Then exa- or rest. Yeah. yeah. Me- stretch, meditate, do whatever the fuck you want. Yeah, but, but don't do let it that. take away from your stress that you're trying to put on yourself in the gym. While training. Like one, you're in the gym. Again, integ- in the gym is integrated. It's quality of work. Yeah. That's it. That's the only thing that matters. Is how much quality of work are you doing within a time period? Yeah. If you can do what you could do in an hour, it takes you two hours, it's not quality of work. It's an Americano versus an espresso. You're diluting your attention and your energy. Mm-hmm. Drink espresso. <laughs> it's better. <laughs> so, so we get into, I mean, that, that's kind of your time exchange for the training, right? Yeah. Yeah, you're going to have to trade that off. And that is going to increase, I suppose, as your level increases somewhat still. Sure. Yeah, no, you know? yeah, but I mean, even look at the top. There's always the one guy that... That's the problem. Is that's in almost all the top people, there's so many outliers. It's yeah. like, yeah. I almost want to look at the, like, 70 to 85 <laughs> percent. Right, the, I mean? the, the competitive level athlete who's not getting paid to do so. Yeah. yeah. No, but even if you take the good ones, most of them outside of this certain, like, pre... You know, the six weeks before the games or whatever, it'll be training twice a day. And now each, done. I mean, mm-hmm. they, they train one hour in the morning, one hour in the afternoon, done. Like, I... I've, you rarely see programs that are past that. And they can't even maintain that. You have to remember that 80% of the workouts are not that hard. Yeah. The problem is like you look at Rich Fonding's workout, <coughs> he had about 20, 24 workouts a week. Only two of them were hard, but hard for him. So the problem is his, yeah, exactly. <laughs> his 60, 70% that he puts on most of his workout, you can't do. Mm-hmm. So if you look at it on paper, you go, oh my God, look at that. Yeah, but he's coasting through it. Yeah, You're dying. Yeah, relative to what you are, it's not the same. No, thing. he can do stuff coasting that you can't do at your best. Yeah. So you don't understand where he's at. That's the problem. And if right? the workout says be, go at this with full intensity, if I do that, I can't do anything else. Like I'm done yeah. for the next, yeah. exactly. maybe the whole day. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, like do, do a true set of five reps back squat with max weight and you're done. Mm-hmm. You're not doing strength for, it takes you 30, 40 minutes to recover. Yeah. To, to get like, after that, it would take me over 30 minutes to be able to do a heavy yoke carry. Because mm-hmm. my leg, everything is just not, you know what I mean? Like it takes a tremendous amount of work to be able to, to get the right intensity going. And by the way, if you start coasting, you'll never get to true intensity, which means you'll never get to heavy, like, if you suck at squatting, okay, I got a very simple solution. You're only gonna squat. You go to the gym, you are allowed three, s- three sets of a heavy squat, no more. After that, you, t- you have to leave the gym. You're gonna be so pissed at yeah. first because you're gonna do three sets and say, I feel nothing. I'm like, exactly. And you're not allowed to do, I've done that many times, you're not allowed to do anything else. That's how I fix a problem. Say so you get three sets of five, max weight. And they're like, but that's nothing. I'm like, exactly. You did that with the sled with me. Yep. You said you get to one put set. one time, that's it, no more. If you leave progress on the table, it's on you. That's yeah. And that's the first time that I ran the whole time pushing that sled. Yeah, because she couldn't before. Because why? Because she had three sets to do it, which means she never found it. I was mm-hmm. like, you get one set. And then you're done with your training. She and, was then, like, and then I suppose you're like so afraid of not getting any work in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> that I'm going to die. <laughs> exactly. That was the point. So that was the thing with the squat is you want to do work. Three sets of five reps at max weight is a humongous amount of work mm-hmm. if you put enough weight on the bar. Yeah. If, you're, if it's not a lot of work for you, you're not doing shit yeah. because it's not heavy because you're not strong enough yet. But guess what? You're going to get frustrated for one session, two sessions, five sessions, six sessions, and then eventually you're going to go, oh, fuck that. Put, let's put more weight. And then you're going to start to give me the intensity I need. That's why the, the sled is one, s- one set, 200 meters. You didn't find intensity. You don't get to do it again next time. And yes, you're gonna be pissed at me for three days. Good, because you puss it out. Yeah. You bitched out. So we have to sacrifice time, that's a given. We gotta sacrifice some obvious physical discomfort within training. But that you're supposed to like that's it. That's what stress is, That's right? not a sacrifice because that's you're true. supposed to like it. That is true. It's like pros, like pro bodybuilder, they say, uh, why do you wanna be a pro bodybuilder? Oh, I like training. Yes. Every single pro bodybuilder likes training. Otherwise, you wouldn't want to be you yeah. want to wouldn't want to be a pro bodybuilder. It's like saying I like looking good naked. I hope so. You're going to be a pro bodybuilder. <laughs> so, I mean, that's part of it. That's yeah. if you're not. We're talking about performance, which means I want to compete and win. Yeah. Okay. Well, then you better like training. Otherwise, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah. And then what has to be exchanged then outside of the gym? There has to be some things in life. Don't you think that like, yeah. when I see that, the, and I'm not saying this is perfect, but you see like the highest performers out there in sports, 
some of them maybe aren't the best fathers and husbands and stuff like that that they should be. It, and is that as a is that because of the one track mind, or is it just the way that they? Are? Yeah, there's certain things where that are going to suffer. The question is how much. Like, are you going to go party Friday, Saturday till three in the morning? No. No. It's Friday night. You get one beer with your friends. You're back. You're home by eleven. Yeah. That's true. That part is true. Like, you're going to go have dinner with your spouse, and that's it. Night. You're not going to go dance all night, getting drunk, pissed drunk, stuff like that. Yes. You're not going to get like you know three pounds of chocolate at night because you're a bit drunk and then there's some left or you smoke some <laughs> weed and you're like, oh, cocky dough. Yeah. And then you go, ah, you're eating <laughs> Yes, that, that part has to go away. Yeah. But if you're a competitive guy, if you're someone who enjoys all women performance, you won't want to do that anyway. <coughs> I have no desire to go party till two because I got to play pool tomorrow. I got to train. I got to do shit. Yeah. So again, that's one of those sacrifices, but that one if you're not willing to do that, then that means you don't want to be good anyway. Yeah, it shouldn't have. That actually no. shouldn't have ever been in exactly. front of it if that's what you wanted. Yeah. you know what I mean. That that actually probably shouldn't be a difficult one. Yes, to the, the whole like you're gonna not gonna be the best father, then you're bullshitting yourself. Mm -hmm. That's not true. Yeah, that because I I created strong fit while being basically a single dad, while being on the road, while doing the seminars and everything, and. Uh, you can always be a better father. Obviously, I'm not the most patient one ever, but I think I did a good job. Yeah. How does one avoid though these types of things? Is, is it about ta just taking care of yourself mentally first? Like, how do you avoid maybe not being present amongst your people in your life, your relationships, your friends, family? Oh, those oh yeah. So of first of all, uh, there's something that does impact you. Me, I remember, is the two hours after training sessions. Well, I wasn't necessarily the most present because I'm still mentally violated. Mm -hmm. I mean, so there's that. But I think a lot of that stuff uh, we take for granted that, oh, I feel like this because I train because of this. Well, what I discovered, that's not true. It's because your nutrition is not on point. You're not sleeping enough. That, that's the no we, we have to backtrack one from that stage where you're already feeling like shit. You're already not feeling present and everything. That, to me, is a sign of a problem, not a sacrifice that has to be made. You don't have to not feel present. Like Kyla was saying, she, she uh, felt like killing everybody around her. That's already the sign of an issue. Yeah. Because at some point you were there, right? Yeah, but I think there's a, something to be said about being present and how you're feeling and, like, and knowing that and being conscious of your surroundings. Like yeah. if I know that I'm having, I just had a terrible sh session, I don't like the way that I feel, if I go home and say like, hey, this is happening to me, then th that's a lot better of an experience than me where I did learn to be like, nope, we're fine, this is fine. Like, yeah. keep on Back. taking on this level of stress that you think you have to do. Exactly, that's the problem. Yeah. Is you think to perform, you have to do that. I think that's the biggest problem and is you, you have to suck it up. You have to go, it's normal that I feel like shit. It does really trickle into the rest of your life. Yeah. Because that, yeah. that, it takes, to put yourself through that much pain and training, it takes a lot of strength to be like, no, shut it down. Yeah. I feel nothing. I'm good. But yeah. that. I'm fine, whatever. <laughs> you, you don't just let that go when you walk out of the gym door. That is, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that actually, the, the, the problem is, is that's probably when it's going to express itself the most. Yeah. You know, it's outside. Yeah, but you, you know, like, because you go to the gym, and again, we said you do need to put the quality work. Mm -hmm. Okay, but that does not mean hurting yourself. That's the biggest problem I have with the sacrifice stuff, is some of the sacrifices are obvious, like you need to put quality work. But then people get there, they feel like shit, they're angry, so then they start to hurt themselves. Instead of putting quality work, they go, I feel like shit, I'm going to put more weight. I'm going to do it, you know, like I'm going to grind myself. I'm going to suck it up. I'm not going to feel anything because they think they need that to perform. Well, actually, it's the opposite. Like you, ha you have to put quality work that requires being in flow with yourself, knowing exactly where you are and, and, and things like this. So I think this fundamentally a misunderstanding of in order to perform, I need to be unhappy. It turns into that. Yeah. And that, that's a, that's a self-professing prophecy. Well, you it is, won't perform and happy, I can tell you that. There is a lot of that where it almost becomes like you're just trying to be a martyr yep. sometimes. You know, it's like, oh, poor me. I, yep. got, I got my chicken and rice again. You know, oh, poor me. And but if I eat it, I'll perform, which is not true. Yeah. That's denying the human experience. That's my biggest problem with the idea of sacrifice is you have to not be a human being in order to perform. 
that maybe that comes from the fact that we worship athletes and then oh yeah like in order to be like that you have to stop being I have to stop being me right this is the only way yep and any deviation is me just not committing to it yeah I'm not committed but so I, I have to stop being me which you know in a way I I agree in that sense like to be a better performing athlete you have to be become another person you have to become the person capable of doing the feats you want to achieve yeah. that is very true but the idea that you have to suffer through that is where I disagree it's like the, because I have to become that new person I'm going to hate myself now and that's where I disagree I don't think you get to that person you need to become through hate I really don't think so. I think you can't be fit through hate. You, it, it's the most hippiest thing I'll ever say, but you have to do that through love, not hate. Yeah. You can't hate yourself into that one. One of the weirdest things for me this past open season, I had no expectations of doing anything exciting. Yeah. Like, that's just not where I perform well. And um, I signed up for it anyway because, you know, of course I would sign up for something that would make <laughs> me hate myself <laughs> in five weeks. But we were traveling for the last workout. And I had two options. Well, I had lots of options, but I chose to do an assessment with Richard and not do the workout. When I, when I told my friends or people around, they're like, Do you what? You did all of that work and you didn't do the last workout? No. Yeah. Like, oh, you must not be serious about CrossFit anymore. Why? Like, well, that is the question. Why right? is my <laughs> value associated to that score? Because yeah, well, there's yeah. plenty of really good athletes who forgot to post their score one week, and now they're not in the open. So do they suck now? Are they not a yeah. serious yeah. athlete? Like, exactly. Why yeah. is all of a sudden my value associated to this leaderboard that nobody freaking knows who you are, <laughs> and I'm not going to win any money on it, or I'm not going to feel better? Yeah. after doing it. So why sacrifice those opportunities that I had in life? Just plus commitment to what? Right. Commitment to you getting better, which maybe that assessment would actually allow you to become better because you learn about yourself. Or commitment to, to HQ and, you know, putting your number so you can finish 200, to, you know, 2,289th, not you, I but made in like general. I $20 yeah. donation for the year. Like yeah. <laughs> the commitment to what? <laughs> you know, like, yeah, yeah. yeah, like it's, it's such a weird thing. So that, that's where... Um, it bothers me to see people say uh, what, what they're willing to sacrifice, what they think they should. So half of it is on them and then half of it is on us. As coaches, where we promote the wrong ideas. Like you have to be committed. Yeah, but we're going to have to, let's define what committed means. Yeah. Right, so to, yeah, go ahead. So the other thing though is for, like, like in, in your case is, let's just say having an assessment with Richard and having a good game plan on how to maybe fix some holes in your game how much better are you going to be exactly. a year from now having done that versus if you Is that had commitment? Well, and I think I think the the timeline with which we set, I mean, setting goals is extremely important if you're going to be great at anything, yeah. I think. Um, and I think it's important that you do not set too steep of a trajectory because with that, the risk goes way up. No, but so you, if you're trying yeah. to do a lot of progress in a narrow amount of time, you end up skipping things like, like that. You yeah. say, oh, well, I mean, I got to cover this and I got to keep doing the work. But that's not a goal you set up. She set up the goal to become better, to have certain even numbers. Yes. You want certain numbers to show that you're better, I'm all for it. But that's the goal. So whatever you need to do to get to that number is what you need to do. Finishing that last workout in the open might not be what is necessary to get to that number. So committed to what? Now you're not committed to your goal anymore, you're committed to rules. Mm -hmm. to, a, to rules you set up for yourself. Yeah. But who said that those rules will make you better? Yeah. You know, it's like people saying, I got to train on Friday and I got to do, uh, so I, I want to go at it by the end. I want to go at it through training and nutrition to explain what I mean by what you need to focus on and everything. But it's like saying Friday, I'm going to deadlift 85%. I'm going to deadlift at 85% for five reps. And what if you show up on that day and your back is bothering you? Are you going to deadlift anyway? What if on the first set you feel a tweak in your back? Are you going to do two more sets like your program says? Are you committed to your goals, which is getting better at lifting, or are you committed to the rules yeah. that your training says this? This is not the same thing. If you can listen to your own voice telling you where you are, then how committed are you? Well, I think some of those some of those things too, like the you know you, you mentioned, like you know you're you kind of setting your own rules for yourself, and sometimes it's it's you doing it. Usually, you are kind of setting your own standard, but also a coach. Your as program. Well. Yeah, but a coach as well. But the interesting thing is you have to have, like you said, like it has to be kind of a, from a positive always. place yeah. always. 
And what happens is if, if you, you set these parameters that are hard and fast for yourself or a coach sets them for you, and what happens if you come in and it's more than what you got that day? All right, so you stretch it all out. You really make it work. You push it. You get it done. You almost wreck your shit. Uh, you're going to probably resent either your coach or yourself for putting that amount of work on you. Plus, you're dead for two days. So yeah. here goes the next and session. Then, and, then, and then you're going to yeah. go fall into this tailspin. And you're going to do that every week? Yeah. Until your body breaks. So and and what, what happens so if you do the responsible thing in that case yeah. is, all right, I'm going to pull back a little bit. The mm -hmm. problem is, whether those are your rules or your coach's rules yep. that are set out, you're now disappointing yourself or your coach yep. yeah. over and over. But and that's over because again. you don't understand the point, though. Yeah. You're not understanding the point of your workout. The point of your workout is not 85 for 5. That is not the point. The point of your workout is to make you stronger. That day, maybe you'd be stronger having a better form on a deadlift, working on this, or, you know, like mm -hmm. going forward. That's the yeah. goal of your program is to get you forward. The program is like macros, is to give you good lifting habits in the gym. A good lifting habit is today I'm incapable of doing 85 by 5 because my back hurts, because my form sucks. Yeah. Fix your form. Fix, you know, do 70% correctly before you do 85 like shit. That you, you're, getting it, you're getting the wrong idea. Out of what a programming a program is a lifting habit you're creating. Yeah, it's a glorified schedule, really. Well, that was something we were talking last night about some of my goals, and when we were talking, we we're talking about adding essentially a hundred pounds or more to my deadlift. I'm like, that's never going to happen. But when you start talking yeah. about it in a long-term goal, which mm -hmm. is something I've never been good at, it's yeah. like I want to muscle up, and I want it yesterday. Yeah. Which is most people's problem, right? Yeah, like, yeah. But when you say, if you have 30 pounds a year, think about well, you're how be quickly five in five mm -hmm. years you're going to build that up. And it, that is really how, as coaches, we should start getting people to think yeah. about their goals. By the way, 30 pounds a, week, uh, a year was always my heart rule. You get 35 pounds a year, 15 mm -hmm. kilos. If you go over that, I shut you down for yeah. the year. You shut off for the rest of the year. And then we will we will start again next year. But you're not allowed 35 pounds for the year. Why? Because three years from now it's 100, yeah. and it's going to take you two years, two and a half years, to build a structure so that you can lift that extra 100 pounds on your deadlift. Yeah. So 35 pounds a year. That's interesting, and and that's, and, and that's actually pretty reasonable for a normal person. I mean, it's in fucking general in the beginning. Look where you right. are in four years. For sure, for sure. It's but a huge what, amount. Well, what I, what I mean is this: like, so you take someone. I, I just saw this yesterday. Someone like. Like Larry Wheels has a 900 pound deadlift, yeah. but he just showed his list of every PR for the last three and a half years, and it was like 760. Yeah. You know, from se so so he he's actually put on like less than 140 pounds in three years as probably the single most genetic freak in all he's of strength yeah. sports. Not With to mention all drugs. the help he's getting, yeah, and, exactly. And so like so it's like, well, what do you think? You're going to hundred pounds, yeah. is that a year? Like, no, that's not a year, no, it's but like in the long years. run, yes. mm -hmm. yeah, that's not impossible. And it's no different than the bodybuilders, right? Like, I, you look at these people who have these incredible bodies carved from stone. They worked year after so year long. after year. Yeah. They yeah. ate this way year after year after year. And, and all of us year. look at it and go, well, if I just diet for six months, I can look like yeah. that. Yeah, for two I'm weeks until you pick up the cupcake again. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. these are well-developed, mature muscles. Extremely gifted people that already have it, and then they push it, but they push it by fucking 4% yeah. every time. Like, look, look what 35, 35 pound is if you're a good lifter. It's 5% a year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's that's a great lifter. You know, and say something like that's, that, like so, something get. like Larry Wheels too is a guy. That's where the he isn't he, like we mentioned about moving your center. You know, I don't see him failing a ton of lifts. I don't think he's out there getting stapled by weights he shouldn't be lifting either. He's doing yeah, the work. Yeah, and by the way, Ed Cohen, well, yeah, was famous for doing twelve week cycle without ever failing a lift. Yeah, because he knew himself. But honestly, yeah, that 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 because we are talking about this, I was like. 15 kilos, 35 pounds. If you make it, I shut you off for that lift till next year. Yeah. Don't. But that's okay. But that's that's what when we talk about programming, that's what we need to talk about. Not that fucking six week thing. That doesn't mean shit. Like anybody can get to 10% body fat and lose it within a week. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, the only thing more painful in life than like going through training on a regular basis is getting fucking hurt and having to sit. And watch everybody months. else train. Yeah. By the way, anytime you lose two months because of injury, that means you lost six months. 
because you have the two months to get back to where you were, the two months to start to make progress, and the two months you lost in the first place. Mm -hmm. So you, have, you triple your time of recovery. You want to do 10% more volume, stop getting hurt. We calculated one time that any program when it came to snatching for crossfitters, they would miss about 10 to 12 weeks of uh, snatching per year, 10 weeks basically, that's 20% yeah. of your year, right? Right, you, you snatch twice a week, You've, if you snatch twice a week, count, but I bet you because your shoulder was hurt or your back, you have missed 15 to 20 sessions this year of snatching. Look at that, you, you want to do more volume, Squ do those, yeah. Yeah. don't get hurt. You don't want more volume? Don't get hurt. Don't get hurt. Yeah. Okay, is there a way to do that though? Because don't get hurt, does that mean be lucky, don't get hurt, or does that mean there is a way to get there? Yes, that's what, that's, so that's why we do what we do, because there is a way so that you can snatch without getting hurt. There is a way, that's the, what pisses me off, is there is a way. So while well, we're on the injury subject right now, yep. right? And, 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 and like I said, I do think the, the steeper the trajectory you try to, try to yep. take, you're signing up for a higher risk of injury, no matter Obviously. what, right? But with competition, there is still, I don't believe that you should get hurt in training. I think you should try to avoid that at yep. all costs. Training yep. is for training, training yes. is for progress. Competition, Hurting is the opposite yep. of that. Yep. In competition. That's different. It really just depends. You, because right? now, you, no, now you're, pushing, I, you're pushing the limit. Yeah. And yeah. fuck it. I and I still think you need to choose your battles too. I, yeah. I really do. Yeah. It's like, you know what, this is my first year. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? If no. this is your first time, this is a good event for push you. Push yourself. This is a good event for you. Fuck it. Don't do anything stupid. Yeah. yeah. I but had a rule for my athletes that if you, uh, unless you were winning a gold medal, that you don't save the snatch, even if it's a, P, a five pound PR. I agree with that fully. Yeah. Because yeah. what for? Yeah. What for? That's like Loco fucked up his shoulder. Yeah. Saving a snatch at home. And he said it like that was the dumbest thing I've ever done. Ten years later, his shoulder still hurts. Well, and they say that too with like in the Chinese weightlifting, you know, yeah. their weightlifting. Yes, never save a lift. Is it? Is it? There at at every age, mm -hmm. you'll see some somebody will stand up. I remember seeing a video one time. A kid, a kid, was probably like thirteen. And he stands up a lift, and you could tell it was a PR because he he had he he came up. He had to take one little mm -hmm. step, and he was up. It would have been a good lift, you know what I mean? On judges, it yeah. would have been a good lift. Um, he put the weight down and was as excited as they let them get there, and the coach came and just fucking ripped him a new one. Because the whole thing is like, don't you dare, don't you dare fucking it. do that yeah. here. Mm -hmm. So now all yeah. of a sudden that's okay, and now you're gonna sell it. It's like, no, that lift was yeah. no good from the beginning. Yeah. And, and, and that's not what we're here to do, is put up yeah. numbers in training. That's that, an that important th thing. And that, I wish <coughs> everybody would see videos like that. Yeah. Because they don't understand, that's what training is. Yeah. That's the key. Is is that like you 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 have the wrong mindset? But so by the way, this is on a lot of us as as coaches because that's what you see the programming that says eighty five percent. That's why I like the Chinese on this. Is they didn't even say eighty five for five. They say a heavy five rep. Yeah, we don't and care. Heavy, like you you mentioned last week about how um, you know it got to the point where at some point you were starting to kind of fall apart. Your recovery mm -hmm. was slipping. Mm -hmm. Sleep wasn't good. Um, you're trying to stay so you know you're just hanging on to everything just just barely. And you got to where all of a sudden then you were you were barely hitting your training numbers. Yeah. So even the numbers yeah. program for you, you're hitting. What is, or not hitting, <coughs> what is that like then for you going into the gym knowing that the numbers on there that are, these, this is training. Based of case, it's stagnating. And you're having That's to probably really, really, really elevate yourself to almost make those work. It's so defeating because not only, like your goal is to always get better, right? Yeah. And I'm getting worse. I'm yeah. trying so hard and I'm getting worse. Sacrificing so much. My yeah. technique is going to shit. I can't feel anything anymore. And no matter what one. I do, the second that I see 170 or above or my snatch, I start freaking <laughs> out yep. because I'm like, I'm gonna miss this, I'm gonna hate myself, this is gonna be a bad day. Yeah, I used to be able to do this, now I can't do this. Yeah. Yeah. I used to do this Everyone's gonna catch me, yeah. I'm not gonna matter anymore. They're all judging this me. Like yeah. Yes. And Yes, it's ridiculous, but that's how you feel. Yeah. It's no different than a beginner. It's when not ridiculous. You're in flight. It's not ridiculous. Like that's a, a neurological and state. And as a competitor, though, yeah. we compete. Yeah. So it's tough to turn that off in training. When the new you guy know? comes into the gym and he hasn't worked out in years, he'll always tell you, well, I used to be able to bench this, or, or I used to I be able to run this mile. Yeah. <laughs> so e see, even the beginner level athlete, we have this expectation. Mm -hmm. And no matter how much time goes in between it, or what we've done yep. in the interim, we still want to be that old self or better. But the problem is it's that, that it's outcome based. The problem is that people misunderstand what they should have that mentality for. 
like I'm all for I should be able to do that this is what I should be I'm all for that but that should be based on how you feel with the lift and not what the number of plates on the bar mm -hmm. right it's they should be thinking about like I should feel like this on the lift the lift should feel like this yeah. if you were to work toward that toward making the deadlift feel good your technique would be better and then of course hormonally speaking neurologically speaking you will start to pick up faster and then you would do good the problem is when we become outcome based I used to deadlift 400 therefore I want at least 320 regardless on how I feel today that's not how it works is you should go into gym going like a deadlift should feel like this mm -hmm. that will bring you back to a decent deadlift real fast because your body remembers so the problem is uh, to me is a program that is outcome based 85 for 5 like the, again the Chinese like a heavy double because it's like it's get to until it feels heavy and give me a double and I think that's important to define because you mentioned yeah. like the term outcome based is actually probably the nature of this entire conversation right yeah. because you're trading exactly. in everything within that training session for this one outcome yeah. and guess what you might still not fucking get it <laughs> Anyway, and, but and that's the way, but, but that's the way then, then when we yeah. look at the competition side of things, it's like because your goal is, you know, I want to go to the CrossFit Games yep. or I want to go to Worlds or whatever. Outcome based, outcome it's based, like outcome based. Outcome, outcome, outcome. And then the same way we take that, like, you know, pedal to the metal, just yep. headed to the end thing that we do in training, then we end up doing that in our lives. And you start to get blinders on, and then you end up with relationship by the way, this problems, sleep. This is food. against uh, the Freestone model. Like your nervous system cannot learn based on outcome. No. And wouldn't that be it's a cool proven. concept though? Like instead of saying the top of my, the peak of my goal is I want to be, uh, I want to bench this or I want to qualify for this competition. Like what if the top of that was, I want to feel this type of way in my own skin. Yeah. And I can feel that way by performing well in the gym or being able to be present at my kids' softball games or like, we started as you as a person and then your athletic feats and yeah. then your professional feats like we were talking But I think it's self-defeating anyway Th That's the key is people will say yeah, but I want to make it to the games I'm like yes, but what we're saying is if you do all that where it becomes about 400 pound deadlift and not how the deadlift feels You will crash and not perform anymore. And then what happens? Like what do you do yeah. afterwards? No, but plus you won't make to the game. You won't make the games in the first place, and on top of it, you pissed everybody off ar around you. Mm -hmm. I think the only way you make it to the games is by putting yourself as a person first, For sure. knowing what you should do in the gym, should not do, not sacrifice. I think all the stuff outside of the gym will make just as much you performance wise that as you as the work in the gym. I think the second you start to think it's about the four hundred pound, you take that shortcut, which is I'm going to lift three fifty, whether I like it or not today whether I feel it feels good or not, because then you start to what you were doing, what, which was the cause of the issue with Carla, for example, was even if I don't feel like it, I'm just going to bury it down and, and not feel anything. I'm going to shut it off. And then what happens three months later, you don't feel anything. Which, and that's which, when the which shit went down. Which from the Friston model too, it's like the feeling is the only way progress it's happens. The only so when way, you turn that yes. off, you've shut off everything. Progress. It's only outcome, there's no more progress. Exactly, I think progress is never out progress of outcome. I don't think that's what Freeston says, but um, there's never progress of outcome. There's always progress on how you feel. So how do I feel deadlifting 300 pounds? Do I feel better than last time? Yes, that's progress. Mm -hmm. 310 versus 300 is not progress. That's progress of outcome. Your nervous progress system do not care. Progress is the day that 310 feels the same as 300. Exactly. That's what progress is. That's what progress is. It's not about getting 310, but almost rattling your shit apart. The exactly. Process. Because if you 310 fell heavier than 300, that's not progress. That's just more weight on the bar. To your nervous system, it makes no difference. Mm -hmm. All it did basically is telling, is telling your nervous system not to lift the 310. Yeah, it puts some, puts some stop signs up before that weight comes up. Exactly. So that next time, 310 is going to be a lot harder, mm -hmm. which is basically what happened to you, right? Is you mm -hmm. shut off everything and then suddenly you can't feel 170. One, you can't feel 170 feeling good. Now you start to panic at 165 because that's what your nervous system does. It puts you in flight because he has no understanding of what's coming next. And before you know it, 150 is heavy. Mm -hmm. And those that's what I think happens. And that that progression that it actually sounds extremely similar to what we've talked about in the past with chronic pain. Also, yeah, it's the same thing. It's just self fulfilling prophecy at yep. this point. Exactly. And your tolerance or skill level or whatever it is Goes is going to continue yep. to go down and down and down. Yeah. That's why I don't think you can perform like this. Like yeah. so, um, so you were doing better with 90 minutes a day versus two and a half hours, basically happy versus, because everybody would be like, yeah, but look at the work she put in. I'm like, but I don't care. 
Like that idea that because you put more work on paper means in the long run you're going to be more successful is not true. If you're miserable, if you hate yourself, you will not perform. People tend to value any accomplishment on paper, yeah. on, on, on paper, but, but really any accomplishment is externally valued often by the things you traded for it. Yeah. So often. Yeah. You know what I mean? It, it's oh, I had to spend all this time away from my family, and I had to do all exactly. this, and I, you know, I, I quit my job so I could just train all day. So now my wife works three jobs, and, and exactly. you know what I mean? Exactly. Yeah. There's, it, and there's it's all this stuff, and it's it's like oh, he really, he, he really, really wants went it. for it. So then it's about what it says about you, not about your performance. Yeah. What you want is you want to look committed to something, mm. whether you do it or not. If you l if you want to look committed over being committed. Guess what? You're bullshitting yourself. Yeah. Isn't that what at the end, this isn't that the blind spot we all fall into? We want to look the part instead of being the part. Mm -hmm. Looking the part is being outcome based. Being the part is actually doing the stuff that is hard, which means loving yourself, making sure you feel the movement and everything, even when you get frustrated. It's so easy to shut it off. Because I think, I also think those, some of those sacrifices are easy to just make. If yeah. you thought that if you thought that that's all you had to do to go to the CrossFit you sacrifice games, your, right, your I'm gonna, relationship. I'm gonna sleep four hours a night. I'm gonna be yeah. a dick to everyone I know. Uh, yeah. I'm gonna eat until I'm miserable, and I'm not. You know what I mean? And I'm just gonna lock myself in the gym for five hours. Exactly. A day. I'm, I'm gonna not gonna do okay. 700 friends. reps, and I should be good. Yeah. So yeah. all you, so then all you have to do is just check. fucking check these boxes, and then here I am. Yeah. I've done it. And then there's three years. But then there's no work to be done. Yeah. All of a sudden, and you're not getting. Any Better. You're not getting better, and now you're three years later, you haven't made to the games, and you go like, uh, And you have nothing else and you to have sacrifice. Nothing. And you quit because you hate you quit. it. Exactly. <laughs> so now you've just had a really expensive <coughs> hobby that you killed yourself over for two years, and then nothing to show for it. Yeah. And that's what we see continuously. Like, she was ready to quit when I saw her. Yeah. Like, I would give her one more year, and she's done with CrossFit forever. And now she's yeah, back if to... If I was lucky, yeah. yeah. exactly. Back to uh, hating yourself, even worse. Back to 180 pounds and fuck it, fitness is not for me. Yeah. <laughs> Whereas you have a supremely gifted person who could do so much, like she'll kill uh, powerlifting and Olympic weightlifting this year, you'll see. You, you can't perform like this. That, that is the, that's what I get so angry when I see all the programs out there. It's like they give you a program, a 12 weeks program, and they go, look, if you do this, this is what you're gonna get. Yeah, but this is 12 weeks. What about next year? Yeah. Because that 12 week program might work for 12 weeks, but then it's gonna take you six months to recover. It's the small so off trap, man. Yes. I could define almost everything that I see amongst training. Yep. Uh, on the small off idea. The small yep. off idea. Yep. yep. Just Kill yourself more volume, more volume, more volume, more volume, and you might scratch yeah, together yeah. some PRs. None of them will be on a platform, by the way. You'll get some yeah, gym PRs, true. and then, and then, and then it's six hopefully, months to recover. And then hopefully you stop. Yeah. But if man, if that extra PR you got was like, if you put a lot of value on that, take another run at it, and you ain't making it. No. You know? So that, that to me, the hard part is to have a program based on how you feel. Like, okay, how do I feel today? And try to make it work, and try to get that 310 to feel like 300. Doing week after week after week of quality work, and then you feel frustrated working on that. That means that when you walk into the gym, you're frustrated. You're gonna have to get yourself into a better m space mentally. Mm -hmm. Right? You're gonna have to be appreciative of the people around you. You're gonna have to do all the stuff that allow you to be positive towards your lifting so that you keep the passion going. How many of you guys out there that train like Kyla used to still like what you do? Be honest. How many of you still like what you do? How many of you still like yourselves? Or know why the hell you're doing it? How many of that? How many can say why? Because I love being in the gym so much. No, no, no. Not just being in the gym, training. How, ma how many of you still like training? Still going like, hey. So how many of you still like yourself? Forget love yourself, like yourself. Not, don't hate yourselves. How many of you out there, ladies especially? Right, can we talk about all this? Because this is like women hating themselves in CrossFit, fuck me, I saw so many of them. Mm -hmm. yeah. If you talk to them on the side, like you know, seminar, they're like, ah. we talk a little bit, they go like, I just can't take it anymore. Can we talk about this? And this is because you're following stuff that are outcome based. All the stuff we talk about on the podcast, the freestyle neurologically, everything tells you you cannot do things based on outcome. Dopamine is not released based on outcome. It's, based, it's released based on expectation of outcome. The reason you love training is because you still think about how you feel while you train and not outcome based. 
That is not how this works. Carl Friston, neurologically, it is not how this works. And I think to... We have to stop. Even to interject in a way to like maybe break that outcome cycle, right? Yeah. Is it fair? It's, it's the, the thing is, is now all you need to do is go in and start to seek a feeling and get that. And maybe exactly. set something pretty realistic. No, but by the way, the set the feeling based on what the workout is supposed to be. Yeah. That means you, you're getting stronger, set of squat. Okay, make it feel heavy. Right. You go in conditioning. Okay, make it feel hard. You're on the you're on the sled. Okay, make 200 meters feel impossible and still do it. One set, because you can always take two more steps on the sled. Right. Mm -hmm. So make it hard at 170 meters. Die by the 190. Heart attack at 195 and still make it to 200. That's it. That that's literally how you train because that neurologically you understand. Yeah. The weight itself you cannot understand. All those programs based on 85% versus 84 and everything, and they tell you if it takes 60 seconds, it's all bullshit in that sense. It's basically gym habits they're trying to give you. That's it, but they have to explain it like that. When they tell you if you do that program for 12 weeks, you'll, you'll get that. Yeah, but when you're not seeing, is what about the other stuff? How long does it take you to recover? Are you hating yourself? Do you still enjoy what you do? Uh, do you sleep at night? If you don't do any of that, that you won't make it. Because understand that getting strong, getting fit is the next three, four years of your life. So if we, you know, if we were to just assess that on its own, right? So mm -hmm. we, yeah, have, we, we have the, the yeah. outcome. I think the solution to the training side of things yeah. is to, one, put a reasonable amount of time, effort. Uh, I mean, what's the word to use? Integrity. Yeah. Leave the integrity in your training and exchange the outcome for this like forward lean into progress. Into, posi and yeah, into, into positiveness. Yes, and then focus on feel. Yep. You know what I mean? Things yep, should exactly. feel good. And, and, and heavy. And, and heavy, and of course you're gonna push that line. Every once in a while. I, think, I was thinking, nope, and you gotta know where that is, exactly. because then you know. So you go heavy. Because so still, you still can't be a fucking wuss at the gym either. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? You can't exactly. go, I did five and it felt good. It's like, yeah, but, but, you can put ten but there should be, let's just say the last weight. rep on yeah. the last set, Maybe you fall apart. Right. A little you bit. know yeah. if you're bullshit. You know. Yeah. yeah. So it should feel heavy. It feels heavy, and it, and it feels good. Good. Add a little bit of weight. Yeah. And it still feels oh, it's fucking heavy, but it felt good. Okay. There you go. And that's then, that's your weight. And you continue to then prove to yourself what you can do, and still have it feel good. The, that's progress. This yeah. is the idea that we all skip, right? And we were talking about this with you with pool. So we go beginner level athlete, foundations of movements, whatever. And then we immediately jump to high level, high skill, professional athlete. We miss the finding yourself as an athlete in the first place. Yes. That what does belt. heavy yeah. feel? Like what kind of athlete am I? Am I good at running or am I good at lifting? Because once you jump to that high level athlete, like competitive mindset, you, you have just to have everything. Yeah. So they're yeah. going to train everything. Yeah. 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 Even though, yeah, but so like for strongmen, like I understood right away, powerlifting was not my thing, but I was better on moving stuff. Okay, so do you know that about yourself? You're gonna have to know that. Like right. I discovered that playing pool, where I was like, I, the th the game I thought was mine is not mine. I'm not that guy, because I spent so many times on YouTube watching videos of the pros. But guess what? I'm not them. They have ten years on me. They have skill on me. They have probably talent on a lot of stuff. And plus, the guy I was always looking is like five four. I'm six foot. Uh, you know what I mean? Like just, I'm not him. Yeah. I'm me. But I, haven't, I never took the time to find me on a pool table because I was trying to mimic others. So it's also Which is good though because that's that's still where you should start, right? Like but that's she just said, start. that's a blue yes, belt. Thing. Exactly. Exactly. Just like she said with 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 the trainings, you come in, we establish a movement. We based. establish it's all memorization, exactly. and that's for you. You're memorizing everyone else's game. Exactly. All the options. But then that's a blue belt thing. Like yeah. we we made a podcast about this. It's more yeah. memorization first, but here comes that time where you have to find yourself. Exploration comes in. Do I do this or do I do that? I don't know. You're going to have to go on the fucking mat and practice it. And that's where, that's where people skip. That, they sacrifice that part. Mm -hmm. With that exploration, because they go, no, 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 I'm going to say what my coach told me and everything. That's the easy way out. When you stick with memorization, just know you're a wuss. When you're asking me what you should be doing, you're wussing out. You should ask me for advice, not for what to do. Yeah for my opinion on things, not for what to do. You should never give up on exploration. The great ones still do it, you just can't see it. Because it's very minute, because their center is so far that you're not capable of seeing them. But that doesn't mean they're set in what they do. They, can, they always try to progress. 
What you're doing basically is skipping the part where it's your game. Mm -hmm. That purple belt level. And so many of them try to go from blue to black, and guess what? You can't. Because if you do skip that part, you don't have to be responsible for that. That too. Yeah, That's what's important. Or and, 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 and you're being sold, yes. you're being sold uh, unicorn bullshit by unscrupulous coaches that make money off of that. Yeah. There's both. There's both. Yeah. There's only athlete, don't get me wrong, people have to. Uh, do that, but there's also an industry. Yeah. There's also an industry that is based on that. Listen, I do the exact same thing with Google Maps, guys. Okay, yes. I will put on Google Maps. Yes. I will never learn my way anywhere. Exa I will have to use. True. I can learn my way here from your place in one trip. Yeah. But after the first few times we went, what I did was I put on Google Maps, so I made it through. And it ended up taking me like 20 trips before I had it fucking figured out. And by the way, it is a straight bike ride. <laughs> <laughs> you just follow the water. It's I really not that hard. turn. Yeah, yeah. exactly. But, uh, and, and, but, but that is it. It's like you never get the crutches off and you're never walking on your own. And we have an industry that feeds off of that. Mm -hmm. there's, there's value in exploration, too, because there's always adversity when you compete. Yes. The bar is going to be different yes. than you touch. The floor Slippery. might be yeah. uneven. The wall ball is going to be shaped like an egg instead of a circle. Mm -hmm. Like, so what do you get? You show up to region. You show up to these qualifier events, and the bars are slippery, and there's no tape, and yeah. you can't find chalk. So you mean to tell me you're not going to do a pull up? Or they got the stumpy bars to fit into the lanes. Too bad, right? <laughs> and then so instead of freaking out because you only trained in this this one direction. You play. Yeah, because you you're feel, familiar with it. Yeah, and you feel what a heavy and, back and squat feels like after you've run a mile. And you remember what it feels like. Yeah. You're like, I'm not lifting the bar. I'm feeling a certain way. So all you do is you take that bar to make you feel the way you're familiar with. That's the only way this works. But if you never felt anything in the first place, like, what do you have to look back to? To, to? to me, this is the biggest, uh, that's the biggest loss of integrity is that. Is, be, is athlete that hide behind programming and oh that's I do what my coach tells me and everything I'm like N you can loyal is great that's not what this is you know my favorite way to test if you're a CrossFit coach you coach group fitness my favorite way to test whether or not you're you the way you program or the way your culture whether it's too outcome based is this put together a workout something very simple let's just pretend it's a cycle of something and clean and jerks mm -hmm. and something else right but I want you to let them choose what they're gonna do for clean and jerks. Dumbbells, barbells, sandbags, yeah. right? Let them choose. Uh, you're gonna find that the people that are very tied up in outcome are going to start to lump together and they're gonna say, well, we're all gonna use the sandbags so that our scores are the comparable. Same. So I know Almost exactly same, yes. where I fit that I still beat you. Not, I want to do this one or I should because do this the one of instead. The workout this one will be more yeah. challenging. Maybe you're not up for that extra challenge, so your head's not it, and you take something more. That's fine too. Make a fucking decision. That's point. Yeah. It's about what you're going to do, and not about the outcome. And not about the other guys. And yeah. and and try it. Trust me, you will see the looks on some people's faces. Like, but how? Then if I put a score and my time is faster exactly. than this person, but but I was using this and they were using that, and it's like, oh my god, no. but how are you going to fucking survive? <laughs> Must because, not count. Yeah, because <laughs> that's what that fitness goes right in the fucking toilet. Yeah, that's what outcome <laughs> does. Though it drives anxiety and all yes. that stuff through the roof. Outcome puts you in flight every time. And if you have that vibe can slowly turn into culture cancer, like you need to be aware of it. Yeah. You really do. And, and and you can find just fun little ways to build in play. Way, if you're doing that with yourself, it's the same stuff. Yeah. See where you are mentally. If yeah. you can't do a workout without a specific weight or RX or whatever. If you can't come up with a 20 minute workout to do at home with no equipment, you didn't want to work out. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> you just didn't want to. Yeah. Like if, yeah. if you want something bad enough, you figure it out. But but. I remember also that's the why you do fitness and all that stuff. But even again, even just for performance, right? At the end, the only thing that matters is that you put quality of work. Yeah. It's how you feel, right? If your heart rate is elevated and then on something, yeah, you're making progress. It doesn't. Not, mm -hmm. I mean, like that outcome base becomes an excuse for everything. It gives you, because but then you, of course you drive your anxiety through the roof and everything. People don't understand the danger that comes with that way of thinking. Like they start to rely on a coach, on the programming, on the, on the set structure. It makes them feel good because they're like, I have hope I'm going to make it now because I got all my eggs in order, right? Everything is there mm -hmm. and everything. The problem is the second you rely on that is when everything goes out the window. Yeah. 
because well, you stop exploring. And it's it's I'm, and I may have said this in the last few episodes. I'm not sure, but one of the things we had come over, come up with recently or seen is that you know anxiety is just experiencing failure ahead of time. Yeah. yeah. And 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 that's exactly the way it is when you're outcome based. Failure is an option. You and that's all I mean? you think about because you go like, if I make that weight, I'm not failing. Yeah, but if you feel like shit, it'll feel like failing anyway. It like, doesn't matter. You, you yeah. don't even know and understand what win is. If you look at the, what is the win? What if I by five? What if it feels like shit? You're lost. So how do you win that, that workout? People don't even know. If you ask, what are you supposed to do? They don't even know what winning the workout means. That's what you see in CrossFit the most is people that work out to lose now. Mm -hmm. They work out to feel like shit. Yeah. I see it all the time. But that, uh, again, I think also I don't put it all on people. I think we are in an industry that feeds off of that. For sure. Industry. Because, I, well, because you're in a space where you have very often the fitness space is there to serve and help people with their insecurity. Yeah. Very often. Um, and it's, God, you're in a very, what's the word? Y you need to be trusted if you're in that position. Yeah. And there's not an abundance of trustworthy people in that space. Yes. At least not a majority. No, but we could, uh, like, for example, you give us a list. For example, if you follow a nutrition plan, right, uh, the first question you should ask is, am I sleeping well? Mm -hmm. Do you wake up rested in the morning? Let's start with that. Because I don't care what your percentage of carbs versus fat versus whatever are. If you're not re sleeping well where you wake up rested the next day, you're not doing good. Because hormonally speaking, neurologically speaking, you start to go, performance will go down, everything will go down because you can't perform. Like, you're not going to tell me that you're going to perform well over time sleeping five hours a day of shitty sleep. Like, you're fooling yourself mm -hmm. if you think this is sustainable. You do it one night because you have bad dreams, fine. But week after week after week, you can't progress on that. No one can. Maybe for six weeks, but over time, it's going to kill you. So first things first, is your nutrition giving you a good night's sleep, right? Do you think about food all day? I, do you hate yourself? Do you, are you in a cranky mood all day, every day? It, those are the questions we should ask before how many grams of protein a day. Mm -hmm. the, if you start to worry about how many grams of protein a day you get over the number of hours that you sleep, you're a fool or your coach is a fool, but somebody is fucking up. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. There should be rules like that. I mean, same thing for training. Right? Can you sleep at night? Can you do you hate yourself in the gym? Do you still enjoy training? Do you still all that stuff should be part of the training? Should be part of the program. And especially, you know, get, getting into the on the strength side of things. And listen, if you're in a weight class, I'm sorry, but the things that I do, I can't relate to any but any of you in a weight class. But but what I mean is, if if, if your goal is just to get stronger, there's going to be some sort of uh, caloric surplus that has to be done. But you talk about being in it for the long haul. Um, you also can't just start piling on size to get stronger. Mm -mm. In because in one year, you're just going to get fat. Half the, I mean, don't get me wrong, I did it in a much shorter range than he did. But, you know, Half Thor's and Brian Shaw both ran into that ceiling two, three years yep. ago now, where both of them said, and Half Thor specifically said, I was just getting fatter. I wasn't, wasn't getting any stronger anymore. Yep. And it worked up until then. It did yep. work up until then, and he wasn't getting fat. He was still lean. But then you just run out. What you're doing can only take you so far. And, and then it you probably have to also he sped up the last the last year. Yeah. He got a lot bigger the last year. Like he was putting like it five, gave ten him space. Yeah. He, he was putting ten pounds a year, and then suddenly he jumped mm -hmm. thirty. Uh, same thing with Brian Shaw. Yeah. He was like three eighty, then four hundred, then he was four forty. Yeah. I think that last year when they go crazy, that's when they lost it. And there's yeah. two sides of uh, uh, experience in those, like in the caloric surplus, like. Goodbye abs, goodbye veins. Yeah, that doesn't feel very good, and neither does being hungry. No, like being hungry sucks. Yes. So, <laughs> so, yeah. so you have to be willing to make even these little. Sa that sounds like a little sacrifice, right? Here's the deal: if you want to put a hundred pounds on your deadlift in the next three years, what if you can't be quite as lean as you are right now? Sometimes when I talk to people about that, they will panic in their eyes. No, but maybe... I mean, <laughs> you guys all saw it too. No, but maybe I can do it in three years. I just won't do it in one. Yes, yeah. exactly, exactly. Like, I won't put 65 pounds on your deadlift this year and keep your abs the same way. Mm -hmm. If you want the 60 pounds or the 100 pounds, but you give me four years, then I have a better shot. Yeah. But in one year, you just can't... You know what I mean? Like, gi give me 35 pounds a year 
on your deadlift, I can probably keep the abs. And I think when but we over 60, I won't. When we begin to take control over the process, though, you understand that you're in, in control of those things, anyways. Mm -hmm. So they mm -hmm. become a decision. Yep. And you can own it, and you know that you can get it back because things work. Things make sense to you then. Yeah. You know what I yeah, mean? Like for example, like the you don't want to be hungry all the time. But for example, it's not calorie based because she was having 2,600 calories a day. Yeah, and still, still hungry. hungry all the time. Well, now she's probably under 2,000 and is not hungry all day anymore. So it's not the, the eating more that will make you less hungry. It's doing it correctly. Yeah. We have to stop thinking that doing more is the way. No, it just fucks up your system. You, once your system is fucked up, everything goes to shit. You have to do things correctly. So we're going back to, back to integrity. It's quality, not volume. Mm -hmm. It's quality of work, not volume like you have to uh, we have to set as many time as we as we need to it's nutrition is not about upping calories all the time you, who, uh, I'm not going to use names but this pro uh, especially specific program out there that is all about no you need to eat more mm -hmm. we don't have a underfeeding athletes problem no or people in general that is not a problem in the western world like I don't think we need to eat more in order to get leaner. Like that's n usually not the problem. You eating the wrong things yeah. at the wrong time with the wrong basically follow up on your nervous system. We're doing things against our nature. Yeah, that's where the problem is. You're not sleeping at night because you have conflicting signals and you're doing it incorrectly. It's not about taking ambient. It's not you. You can't sleep. Everybody can sleep no, if you do things correctly. Ten drinks and the three donuts you had before you went to sleep. Exactly. Or the <laughs> two hundred grams of carbs you had before you went to sleep. Or that's the problem. If you clean things up and do it correctly, guess what? Those problems go away, and you don't need the twenty six hundred calories anymore. You don't need the five hours <coughs> of training a day. It's training digested, not training ingested. Just like it's food digested, not food ingested. We have to stop that pounding of the human being as the way forward because you have to understand this is just someone selling you something. Mm -hmm. We have to say it. Most of the time, like you're not lean enough, run more. You're not big enough, eat more. No, train better, eat better. Better quality, correct nutrients at the right time. That's what makes a difference is you don't need to do more. You need to do better. More, you know, better is not more, better is better. That's, I've been saying it from day one. That's what people need to understand. It's just unique. But that's where the work is. That's where integrity is. Is I want better, okay, so I need to make my training better. Do people just double it. They just do more thinking, yeah, well, more is going to work. Yeah. No, more is not better. That's a, that is the, but that's the outcome thing, too, is because yep. you have a number that needs to be more. You have a, so you're just a, time, yep. a, a time that needs to be lower, which means you need to do more work in less time. So yep. the solution is very obviously just to do be more. able to do more. Yeah. But you're just approaching it the wrong way. Yep. You know, driving exactly. the car backwards. Yeah. If you will. And again, we have an industry that sells shit based on that. Yeah. I've never seen someone selling stuff by doing less. Yeah. I mean, like Dorian Yates is the only one who, you know, started to train. No, I don't need to do as much, and that went out the window. Because mm -hmm. now they just do more drugs. Yeah. Anyway, so this episode is brought to you by our first sp supplement sponsor. Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, exactly. Use less. <laughs> uh, dot com. Um, yeah, yeah, but right, we we would go against the entire industry. Uh, we go against the entire industry by saying that yeah. that it's in the hands of people and that they need to you to do less, just better. Yeah, that we're going against everybody. Yeah. That's I think we're going to piss off about everybody That's okay. in the industry. Like, it's not about the coach; it's about the person for the Weird, finding right? for themselves what they should do, and they should most likely do less, just better. Well, like you said, you can have the best coach in the world with the best programming and do all of the work and still have it mean nothing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And actually, more than nothing, still going in a ne negative route. Yeah. You can go from doing class, right, once a day, be happy, leanest, strongest, and then go to best programming ever amongst top athletes, doubling the work and start to go backwards mm -hmm. while hating everybody, including yourself. And that happens all the time. So if it's you, guess what? You just need to find for yourself what works better, because that's the point of all this. Most likely do less, just better quality. Yeah. Well, that's got us wrapped up for this week, I oh, think. There you go. So Kayla, thanks for joining us again. Yeah. You're going to see her much more often. Yes, yes, you will. Um, yeah, it's very good. It's nice to have not just me and Julian being up here. It's good to, because one, you're going to disagree with Julian. Lots of times. Which is good, because I, I have to sit up here and agree with him all the time. That's what he told me. 
Not I'm just kidding. <laughs> Not it. But uh, so go to uh, strongfit.com. That's where you're going to find all the events, seminars, the Strong Fit Seminar, and Coaches Week is still out rolling. So, yep. so uh, check it out if you want to spend. The seminar is a two day dive. Uh, once you've done the seminar, you know, the Coaches Week so with Richard, which is a four day small group, really in depth, more about you, your coaching, your coaching style, one on ones, lots of stuff. So, so that's out there moving all over the world. So go to strongfit.com for that. We've got the nervous system workshop, online workshop. Should by the be time, ready by the yeah. time you're seeing this. Yep. Um, so that is also at strongfit.com. By the time this release, we have the training group yep. started. Mm -hmm. Auto yep. regulation training group is rolling. Uh, if you've heard about it over the past few weeks, if you have any questions, feel free to ask, to email yep. us. What do we email for that? Is that uh, digital, digital circus at strongfit.com? Strongfit so if you do have any questions about what's behind there, um, all, there's information on the website, but if you want to talk to, talk to somebody, that's where you do it at. So uh, you can find me on Instagram at Tyler F. and Stone. Don't forget about strongfitequipment.com and strongfitequipment.eu. Yep. Julian is at strongfit1 mm -hmm. on Instagram, and Kayla is... Okay, thank you. Will you spell that once, though? O-O-H. There's an H in there, okay. K-A-Y underscore. Underscore 32. 32. Okay, perfect. Okay. Under Kayla. At Coffee Girl was taken. We couldn't make the change. We tried to get Coffee Girl, unfortunately, no, not this time. <laughs> we'll find her. We'll find her. <laughs> Believe it or not, we have not <laughs> been able to talk Mrs. Yeah. The, the original Strong holding Strong Fit out. I don't know, I'm blocked, so I can't talk to her anymore. Mm. Oh, it's a long I, story. I peek in from time to time, but there's, it's a long story. there's no movement happening there. Yeah. So. So Whatever. such is life. That's why I said. Leave her alone, by the way. Do not. <laughs> There's been enough people that have to leave that poor woman alone. Yeah, and don't tag her on. Don't tag strong fit. It is strong fit. It's hashtag. It's hashtag strong fit or arrowba <laughs> strong fit one. Do not cross those two. Yes. So thanks a lot for listening, and we'll see you guys next week. Violet. Violet. Where was that here? One, two, three, four, five.